When someone makes a graph from some data, there are a lot of choices to be made about how to present that data. And some of those choices can lead to a different message being sent about the data. Uh, and it can lead to some misleading graphs. Take a look at these two graphs. This is really the same data. You'll notice it says number of students earning A's in math between sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. This one says number of students earning A's in math. And it looks like the sixth graders are doing so much better than the seventh and eighth graders. Like their sixth graders are really blowing it out of the park here. But on this graph, it looks like, well, they're all pretty much the same. The sixth graders are just a little bit better. What's happened here, we see this little jagged line. That is a shorthand that graph makers use to say, oh, I left some of the numbers out here, and, and there's a part of the graph missing. So these are really the whole uh, bars here in this graph, starting at 0 and going up to 90 or 100 or whatever. This one only takes this little section. So it's like we're looking at just this much of the graph and doing a close up on it. And of course, if you look just at just that much of the graph, the sixth graders are going to look way better in this one than in this one. So let's see if we can uh, find uh, the true statement about these two graphs. A says the scales of the two graphs are the same. Well, that's not true. This, this one goes in tens, this one goes in ones. So that they do not have the same scales. The second graph distorts the relative heights of the bars on the graph. Well. The second graph really shows the true heights of the bars. It's this one that distorts them. Uh, C says the scale on the second graph does not distort the relative lengths of the bars. And I think that's our correct answer. Um, this shows the whole bar, so that's the most truthful way to represent this data. Let's try one more like this. Here we have a, a couple of versions of a line graph. And what you'll notice is it says rentals, and then it has years on the bottom, rentals, years. The years are the same. The numbers, however, are not the same. So you'll notice this scale goes from 0 up to 1,000. Here we've got from 500 to 900. So this is sort of like a close-up view. And you'll notice that each tick mark here is in um, units of 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Here, it's in 50, 500, 550, 600, 650. So what that means is that in this graph, the changes look a lot bigger than they look in this graph. So let's see if we can find the true statement. A says there are greater changes in the number of rentals in the first graph than on the second graph. And I don't think that's true. I don't think the numbers are different. If we look at... Um, uh, both of these in 1990, they're both at 500. In 1992, 650, 92, 650. So it looks like the data is actually the same. It just looks bigger here. B says the first graph exaggerates the difference in sales each year. I think that's our correct answer here because it's zoomed in on part of the graph to make the changes look bigger. So that is a little work with misleading graphs.